G'day, I'm Adam Gordon, the Profit Seek Detective, and a very warm welcome to this cash flow optimization report. A five minute interview where we give you some immediate practical tips on how to improve the cash flow and profitability in your business. Many small businesses face a problem with their management systems and getting their processes right. A lot of their costs dis get tied up, a lot of the cash disappears in processes that just don't work. And today I'm joined by Paul McIntyre. Paul, and a very warm welcome to you. All right. Paul's an accredited practitioner of PROSCI, and I'll spell it out, P-R-O-S-C-I, Change Management Methodology, including Masterclass and ECM, Enterprise Change Management Status. He's an experienced project manager, holds a Bachelor of Broadcast Communications, majoring in specifying, sourcing, and implementing complex broadcast solutions and is an authorised representative under the AFSL. He's a seasoned media executive and entrepreneur specialising in business process re-engineering, change management, growth strategies from startups through to corporate. And he has a passion for startups and business solutions that challenge the status quo. He is the managing partner of Kickstart and I've got to tell you that's spelled slightly different that you your viewers might uh, not understand. I'll spell it K-I-X-S-T-A-A-R-T, Kickstart Equities Business Incubator in Sydney. And he tells me that what drives him is his love of helping other people succeed. His theory is that if he can help others achieve, he will in effect be achieving. And in a funny kind of way, what drives him is his love of helping other people succeed. His theory is if he can help others achieve, he tells me that in a funny kind of way, he gets more of a kick out of helping somebody else achieve their goal than in actually achieving his own. It, that might sound weird, but I've got to say, Paul, I understand entirely that feeling. To me, the buzz is when I see a client improve, change, get to where they weren't get a, going to get. There's a classic line in the movie, Saving Private Ryan, where the old bloke, Private Ryan, is standing at the cemetery and he asks, did I make a difference? Uh, and uh, that has always resonated with me. So I, you might find your comment weird. I find it perfectly understandable. Excellent. Now, Paul's going to ask some, answer some questions on integrated management systems, getting the process right, and the importance of having your staff engaged. The rules are simple. We have around five minutes, so I don't um, push that too hard for the interview. And when the countdown timer reaches zero and the countdown timer I have in front of me, that's where we stop. Paul, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. <laughs> Great. So let's start now. First question. Innovative SBS, your prime website, has a particular emphasis on people, process and technology and how they come together in an integrated management system. How do those elements impact on an SME's bottom line? Look, I think it, it has a huge impact because people and process are the key elements and then how you use the technology. If you don't have the right processes in place, you can find your profits may leak by between 15 and 25% on average through a, a lot of SMEs right into the corporates. So it's really important to make sure that you've got the best processes available, that you're constantly monitoring what they are and how effective and efficient they are, and how your staff, the people that power the business, are actually utilising those press, uh, processes. If they're not engaging with the processes or don't think they work, then that's when you find you're going to start leaking the profits. And then you've got the technology utilisation component. Most businesses don't use the technology that they have. They'll use a little bit of it. They might have, as I like to refer to, uh, a technology supplier, throw the technology over the fence, go, there you go, this is how you use it, and they walk away. <laughs> and yeah. when, when that happens, you find that you might only use 10, 15, 20% of the capability of, of that uh, product, and therefore you, you're not really taking advantage of the resources that you have at hand. Right, okay. How important is staff, is the alignment of staff in a business? 
Look, I think it's absolutely critical. The way that we look at the staffing situation, a lot of people might say, well, it's your staff, the workers, and then there's the management. I think there's a third factor, and that's the, the client, the customers. The way the staff engage with the client is probably the most important aspect of your business. Now, a lot of, a lot of business executives, be it small, medium, or even corporates, they think that their business does one particular thing. The staff, the worker bees that are out there doing it, think the business does something else. And then often the client is expecting something completely different to what the, uh, the staff are delivering. So what we need to do is align the business to where the clients need it to be, where your niche is, where you can make uh, the most efficient and effective returns for your business and grow the business to the level you want. So you need to understand what the client wants. So that's the person that's um, dealing with your business on a day-to-day -day basis, how they interact with your staff and how your staff deliver what they need and then management to understand and listen to what the staff are actually delivering to the clients. If you can get those three groups all aligned, then you've got a much better chance of having a business that people want to engage with, interact, and um, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that will help growth. And sometimes you have people who just don't have client skills. Uh. Uh, exactly. And look, you need to nip those things in the bud. If, if someone doesn't have the skills in a particular area, then they will have skills somewhere else. So it's a matter of understanding what those skills are and hopefully you can use those in the business. And when a person's enjoying what they're doing, then they're going to perform a lot better. If someone's not performing well, it's not necessarily because they're hopeless. There's something else going on behind the scenes. So take a look and see what you can do and you'll be surprised at the outcome. I think, yeah, from my experience, I think you're very right there, very right. Okay, my third question. Process is a, is a uh, word that gets commonly used when people are talking about efficiency uh, and efficiency gains, but what does it really mean in a business sense? Look, I think process is all about understanding two key areas, and they are what you're putting in and what you're putting out. So the inputs into the business and then the outputs at the end and the activity piece in the middle. That's where your process comes from. So you need to understand primarily what your end goal is. That comes back to the people side, understanding properly what your business is actually delivering, what the market wants. So then you have the end goal, which is what I have to deliver. So you then want to figure out the most effective way to carry out the tasks to get you to that end goal. And, you know, quite often, things evolve and they might not actually evolve for any particular reason other than the person that's doing it at the time without understanding the full implications of what they're doing. They might make a tweak here or a change there. So you need to keep on top of those processes. They need to be documented. They need to be mapped out so you understand each step along the path to reaching your end goal. And that's really critical. If you can do that, then comes the really important part under the process alignment is making sure you've got effective systems in place so that each component in the process gets carried out in a particular way every day. And then say, for example, Paul, I might be sick, and you have John jump into my slot. If there's a system, then they can look down a checklist and they know, okay, these are the things I need to do. Then it's all carried out and the operations are broken. So, yeah. One of the things I've found over the years doing doing a, a work in that sort of area is also is how many steps in the process add value. Yes, and, and definitely when you're going through those steps, and it, it actually, unfortunately, it comes down to individuals as well, and, and sometimes you've got to make the hard calls. If someone is not adding value in that process chain, get rid of them. They've got to move out of that process change and do something productive. I had a client in the, the power generation area who had a, uh, I think it was a 15-step process to electrify new houses, uh, and it was taking 30 days. Wow. We got it down to eight steps in one day. 
what a difference. And of, of course, you get that right and you look at, wow, look at those savings. Exactly. And, and happier customers. Much oh, happier, yeah. much happier customers. So I love your emphasis on process. I think that's uh, really important. So let's move on to the next question. How important is technology, is the technology aspect for a business? Look, technology is, is really important. I think that a lot of people buy into technology and they don't really understand what it can deliver. Uh, you know, you get vendors that say, okay, this product is going to do X, Y, and Z. So you go, okay, that's cool. The salesman's told me this and you get the product and it's very complex. So one, one thing that I like to do when dealing with the company is understand why they bought the technology, what it needs to do, and how they're actually using it. If they can do that or tell me that, then we can go into the system and find better ways of using that technology, cutting down a lot of the, uh, the processes. Because if you're not doing things correctly with the technology, it can be a very, very long-winded way. And oh, years back now, when I introduced a, a digital software platform for broadcast, going from analog into digital, I had a person come to me and say, look, this is hopeless. Um, it adds this. I've got to click my mouse 15 times and it, it just takes so long. I said, okay, tell you what. I think you've added a few steps here. So I'll sit down and I'll do it and you do it the old way. So I sat down at his desk and I said, go. And I had it done in about three seconds. He'd taken no more than three or four steps. I said, stop. He goes, what? I said, mate, I'm finished. And I said, you <laughs> haven't even got way through step one. Getting out of your chair. <laughs> oh, I said, follow the process. Follow the process, exactly. And, and, and that's the key with technology. It's been designed in a particular way. And um, sure, you can modify it and change things around, but really think about what you want from the technology and it will make a real difference to, to what you're doing. Undoubtedly, this age, and we won't even get on the subject of disruption, which is a, oh. a topic increasingly uh, talked about. Yes. Um, okay, final question. What does integrated management mean for a small or medium business? And how can it make a difference? Integrated management is a really um, interesting, I think, feature or program now for the SMEs, even corporates. What it does is it pulls a number of different activities uh, that you're doing in the business into one technology so that you've got a complete overview. We, we look at um, quality, health, safety, environmental risk and compliance. And there are so many features that you can do there. In the, in the, in the paper world, you might have spreadsheets and disparate information. In an integrated management system, all your information can come into one place. And then there's a thing called business intelligence. You can run business intelligence over it. And within seconds, you can have uh, reports, graphs, tables, diagrams, all coming up showing you how the business is running, how individuals are performing against their key performance indicators, how machinery is working, uh, whether you're compliant with, with health and safety or any environmental issues. It can give you a whole of business uh, view very, very quickly and very cost effectively. One of the areas which I help people with is both tendering, it was, is tendering and to governments, uh, to defence or to uh, uh, resources companies, particularly offshore type stuff. And even for small businesses these days, I notice increasingly they are looking for certification qualifications in terms of integrated management systems. They want work health and safety, they want quality, they want environmental. Um, it's just such a growing issue. Oh, look, it, it's huge. And if you've got a good uh, system in place, it can save you thousands of dollars a year in, in lost time. If you're going for ISO certification, for example, with a good QHSC system, you can have your business set up in, in a good six to eight weeks instead of six months. And then your record keeping is very easy when it comes to compliance and audit time. All the information's there rather than if you're doing it manually or a non-integrated system, then you've got a big scramble for a month before the order uh, arrives to, to come and check all your documentations in place. And therefore added costs. I do have one more question. So 
when you're looking at quality, health, safety, environmental, risk compliance, all those things, uh, how do you help a business and what difference can it make to the bottom line? Look, it helps a business primarily through ensuring that uh, all the forms are filled out, they're all in the one place, easy access. Um, you can have like uh, checklists, for example, that all businesses need to do um, protecting health and safety. Uh, you can have those on your mobile phone or an app on an iPad or, and it's just tap, 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 done. It's straight into your system. It's recorded. If there's an incident, you can uh, log the incident. If it needs a corrective action, you can assign that. You can check that off. You've got closed loop so that you know that when something's assigned, it's always done. And those things can save the business thousands of dollars in fines. They can help uh, from an insurance perspective. When, you, when you're going for your premium reviews, you can say, well, look, I've got an integrated management system in here, and this is how I run my business. I can tell you exactly what we're doing. All our KPIs um, against every aspect that you want to, to measure against, it's all there, we're on top of it. And often you'll find that insurance companies will be very happy because they know that you are compliant and you, you're taking things seriously. From the other side, uh, and where I guess I come from on these things, if you are tendering, be it government, uh, defence or whatever, if you can demonstrate that you've got those systems in place, then from the purchaser's point of view, you're removing risk from them. You know, can we deal, is it safe for us to deal with this supplier? They've got the systems, you're removing possible objections, you're removing the risk, which is such an important thing in, in that, from that side. Absolutely, and, and equally you can say, well, look, I can, with your key performance indicators that you require, I can give you access to them. So on a, on a weekly, fortnightly, monthly basis, whenever you want information on how we're performing that area, we can just uh, send it over, and it, it's all available within minutes of going to uh, the business intelligence area. No, that's excellent, Paul. So where can people go to get more information or resources? I think if they, they check us out on the website first, and that's www.innovativesbs.com.au. Okay. And the is for strategic business solutions, but that was more of too much of a mouthful and a <laughs> line full on the web, so Innovative SBS is, is what we're doing. Um, okay, excellent. So, Paul, thank you very much. It's been very informative. I know our viewers will find that useful, and they've got the, the uh, address to get in touch with you. So, yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Adam.